Even in the midst of staggering loss, war stimulates progress. Ironclad ships, repeating rifles, and the military telegraph system were all developed during the Civil War. In 1860, Thaddeus Lowe, an accomplished aeronaut, approached Joseph Henry with a radical idea. Flying hydrogen balloons for military reconnaissance. Henry walks him down to the White House and introduces him to Abraham Lincoln. To demonstrate its strategic potential, Lowe filled his balloon at the Washington Gas Works on the spot where the National Air and Space Museum stands today, then took flight and sent the world's first airborne telegram to Lincoln at the White House. They haul him down, not quite to the ground, but close, and they walk the balloon with Lowe still in the basket down the mall and around the corner to the White House. And Lincoln comes out and thinks this is a really good idea. There would not have been a balloon corps if it had not been for Abraham Lincoln. I'll often refer to it as Mr. Lincoln's Air Force. Lowe builds seven balloons and devises a way to inflate them in the field. He actually invents uh, portable hydrogen generators, big tanks that are mounted on army wagons, and you fill them up with oil of vitriol and tons of iron filings and gallons of dilute sulfuric acid. And uh, the stuff bubbles away in kind of a frightening way inside these tanks on wheels, and out comes hydrogen. With the tether preventing the balloon from floating into enemy territory, the aeronaut would climb 500 to 1,000 feet in the air, observe troop movements, and send notes down to the ground. Ascending and descending within rifle range was risky, but no one riding in the balloon was ever harmed. Though some commanders rebuffed Lowe, his balloons made over 3,000 reconnaissance flights. Everyone from the commanding general, George McClellan, down to Lieutenant George Armstrong Custer flew with the balloons and admitted that he'd been scared stiff. In fact, Custer said that on his first flight, he cowered in the bottom of the basket. 